Hello, welcome back to my channel. What you see in front of you is something that I acquired a few months ago. It's a Barnett Commando. I got it a few months ago and I thought about fixing it up and doing some stuff with it and then I thought, well why not make a couple of videos about it. I uh, looked up the history on it and a few things that I've learned about it. This is what I've learned so far. It was made in the UK. It's discontinued. So you'll never be able to buy a brand new one. So the ones that are out there are the ones that are out there. It was made in the late 70s, early 80s. So give or take, it's about 50 years old. It comes in two draw strengths, a 175 pound and a 220 pound. It shoots 65 meters a second. Um, 213 FPS's. The draw length on it is 22 inches. It was in two movies that I found. One was a James Bond movie, and the other one was a Chuck Norris's 1983 Lone Wolf. So it definitely has a little bit of history, but there's not a whole lot to look up, surprisingly. I didn't find a whole lot of information about it. Besides that they made a Commando 1 and a Commando 2, which I don't have the second one. It was originally made for the armed forces over there. Um, it served a little bit of time on the battlefield, but got discontinued at some point. And so yeah, that's, a, that's all I've learned so far about it. <clears throat> It is about 30 inches long from uh, tip to stock. It's made out of brass, steel, and carbon fiber. It's a little heavy. It's about the, I don't know if I had to guess, it's probably about the weight of a 30 off six. But it's not too god awful bad. If you can swing a rifle, you can swing this. It's definitely not of a modern time, that's for sure, because of how light they make them now. They don't make them like this anymore. But the thing that drew me to it was the uh, mechanism on it. Right here, how you draw it, you don't have to have a pulley or a crank. All you have to do is, um, you have this shaft right here that goes across here and it, the stock breaks. So when you pull down on the stock, this will come up, grab the wire, bring it all the way back, and it'll lock in. And then you'll close your stock, and then it'll send it back to the beginning. Which is unique compared to, like, nowadays, where you either have to have that pull string, or you have to have that crank. This, you don't have to have either one, so it's just one less thing you have to carry around with you. Alright, I guess we'll go on a little bit of a tour of it and I'll show you it a little up close and show you how a little bit of it works and the different things about it. I mean, it's a real simple bow or crossbow. It's not really complicated like some of the newer ones today are. They look complicated. But yeah, it's got a safety on it obviously so whenever you pull it back this will engage this little thing will come out and then you got to push it back in when you fire it which sometimes like a lot of us is a hard thing you sit there and sight it in and you're staring at your target and you're ready to pull and then you realize your safety's on which is not a bad thing it's just it's aggravating but the scope is it's an olden antler or I think that's what the name of it is Let's see if I can get into focus but it has about as good as it's gonna get it's not sighted in at least I don't think it is I've shot it a couple times but my arrows are too big for it this is a 20 inch arrow and it sticks way out the other end of it which is not good and it's putting a lot of pressure on the top part of this 
because of it leaning forward so much that it's actually striking it at the tip of it and not in the center so eventually it's going to break my arrow and then of course my string's not in the best of shape that's another thing i want to do is get it restrung and that's something else i was going to show on the channel was how to restring a crossbow and then i want to polish it and bring the shine back to the brass but i want to shoot it a few times and see what it can do and all that before i go messing with uh making it shiny again because i'd hate to spend the, all that time trying to uh polish it and then scrub and then scratch the whole top of it but but yeah so i can't fire it right now because I'm just short of breaking my string, and I'm just short of breaking that arrow, so I really don't want to break it before I can fix it. So, anyway, as far as the mechanism is, it's on this rail. When you do it, now you got to imagine a string on it, and then you push your uh, stock down, and the, and it brings back that metal or the brass, and it brings back the bow. And then when it locks in, you just push it back. Now, you have to have a little bit of muscle to push down on it, but it's not too bad. You just got to continuously push and don't give up, because otherwise it'll yank that back, and then this will come up and hit you in your stomach or in your arm or leg or something. So it's one of those, once you start it, you can't really stop it, because if you do, that's how you're going to get hurt. Now people complained about what if this came undone while you were trying to shoot, but as long as you're holding it and you're doing it right and you're shooting, you should be good. You should never accidentally, you know, trying to show it's hard to do, you should never push that down. Like, if you had it straight like a rifle, you'd be alright, but if you don't and you're messing around, yeah, I guess you could accidentally knock this back you see it won't do it because it's got the wire on it but so yeah i guess you could but i doubt it if you're holding it the way you're supposed to and doing what you're supposed to with it you won't have no problems with like that it will wear out over time that's another reason why i want to fix it up i don't really really want to mess with it too much because the parts, I don't know if I can get them, and the only way I think I could get them would be if I found another one. So, I don't know. But anyway, it's like I said, I'm going to shoot some stuff, shoot some targets, see how far away I can shoot it. I'm thinking about uh, 25 foot, and then go 25, 50, 75, 100. And if I can make those shots, then I might go up to about 200 feet and see if I can make or hit the target with this and see what it can do and see the different things I could shoot with it and then I'll fix it up the rest of the way and polish it and set it up somewhere and then it'll be and I'll think it collects dust as a collectible right. that's about all the collectible collects is dust but anyways so my next video hopefully will be of me getting this restrung and show you the process on how to do that. And then the video after that hopefully will be what I've come up with to set up uh, targets. Like I was saying earlier, I'd start at 25 feet and then just keep going back until I can't hit the target no more. And we'll see what the range of it is, see how accurate it is at these different feet and my thoughts on it. Um, I've got a few ideas of what kind of targets, so I to stay tuned for that, and like I said, I get it restrung, shoot it, polish it, and move on to something else. And I plan on doing some more adventuring in different places. I currently went somewhere this past weekend, but I'm not sure if I could film there or not, so... I'm going to have to get the permission to find out if it, if I even can or not. But anyways, like I said, that's pretty much all I got to really say about it now. 
It's a simple made crossbow. It is a good design. I mean, I thought it was. It's from a time and place when I wasn't even a thought in anybody's head, and here it is now today. If only things could talk and tell you where they've been, what they've done. Guys, you know the history about, about everything, you know? Anyways, thank you for watching. I got all kinds of videos going to come out, so stay tuned, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.